happened to Miss Mid at all. I heard she was kicked out of the university. Really? Why? What did she do? Sid, you have to help us. With what? You didn't take apart another of Mid's contraptions, did you? No. Well, yes. But that's not what we want to talk to you about. It's Miss Mid at all. She's been acting strange. Very strange. She's barely ever around. When she is, she acts like we aren't even there. Her head's in a crowd. In the clouds. And that's what I said. In the clouds. Well, she does have a lot on her mind. When did you last see her? Um, not long ago. Ah, right after she got back from saving you from Stone Ear. Then it's probably just about the Enterprise. It did take quite a battering on the way there and back. You didn't break it, did you, Sid? You really should be more careful around Miss Mididol's inventions. I'm not Don't the one to her. moving the boat. It's the her. She's the captain. You could put it back together, couldn't you? I'm not driving. But who's going to put Miss Mididol back together? She seems really sad. Why don't I go and see if I can cheer her up? You do that for us. And for me. In her dungeon. Don't scare him. It's not a real dungeon. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> As if this would scare me. Hey girl, what's going on? Mid, if you have a... Ah! <laughs> That's it! I knew it! The answer was right here under my ass all along! If this doesn't steer to the skies, nothing will! To the skies? You aren't trying to give the Enterprise wings, are you? What else would I be doing? The children seem to think you're avoiding them. They're worried about you. Is this really so important that you need to shut yourself away from everyone? The Enterprise is already the fastest ship in the realm, and that's with the sea beneath her. But what if she weren't bound to the waves? What if she weren't bound to anything at all? It's not fair, the gods get the skies all to themselves, so I'm gonna do something about it. I like Fallen it. had their chance, but they relied too much on magic. And see where that got him. But not me. I've discovered how to do it without. Well, Tell me. Almost. First, I need to make a prototype. And is that a one-woman job? Are you volunteering? I'll have you know the Enterprise is my baby. But if a godfather's offering to lend a hand, I'd be happy to take godfather. it. Godfather? Okay. First, I'll need oil. And not just some old drippings from Miss Molly's spits in the tub and crown. Refined <laughs> stuff, like they make in Aldil. Okay. Then I'll need some bone or shell. Light. Strong. Preferably no longer attached to the beast it belongs to. <laughs> if his beast bones are after, I'm sure the curse breakers will know where you might find some. No, they'll know where you might find some. Mm -hmm. You're the one who offered to help, remember? I okay, speak then. With one of the curse breakers before I set off for Old Hill. Yeah. See if I can't find this bone while I'm there as well. All right, Sid. Come to buy us around, have you? Maybe Only next time. It. Mid needs a piece of light but durable bone for her next project. You've encountered your share of beasts on your travels across the realm. Any ideas? Most bones are the same. Whack them hard enough and they'll break. If it's durability you're looking for, shell will serve you better. Shell. You know what an adamantus is? Mm-hmm. I do. And I know to give them a wide berth. Will any old adamantus do? Well, with Probably shells, not. the older the harder. There's a rumor of an ancient adamantus down in Carava, near Old Bidza. Or what's left of the village anyway. But don't expect to make quick work of the bastard. There's a reason it's lived as long as it has. Mm -hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay then, let's go there. Ah, okay, wait, we have to obtain oil from Ord Hill and then defeat a desert tour in Kurava. Let's get this oil first and foremost. Oh, it's right here. Very nice. Ah, there are some. Wait, enemies? To my right? It's oil. Yeah. After what happened here. Don't care about those. Any left at all. And then there should be one more somewhere around here. Ah, over there. Good. This and now enough. let's defeat the Desert Tour in Korava.
And for that, we're going all the way down here. Okay. Oh, actually, there's a shop with something new. Let's take a look over there first. I'm fairly certain I won't find anything useful. Dancing steel, cooldown time by 4.5 seconds. Okay. Yeah, not interesting. Here we are again. Carava. If you were a tortoise, Togo, where would you hide? It looks like right in front of us, because there it is already. Be so, safe. let's do this. It looks like we found him. Already staggered? Well, that's quick. And done. Did I even get hit? I don't think so. <laughs> Adamantoise shell. Yeah, that's what we need. It's believed an Adamantoise will grow a thin new layer to its protective shell once every two moons. Considering that many of the creatures live for hundreds of years, it should come as no surprise that the shells of older specimens can be several hands thick and weigh over 50 stone. That sounds like a lot. I better get these materials to mid so she can finish her prototype. Yeah, let's do that. Let me just get this because I'm already here. And now let's go back home. Mid, tell me this is all you need. Ah, oh, you make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell me this is all you need. It's most of what I need. After you left, I went over the figures again, and I realized I'd forgotten a one and a zero. <laughs> <sighs> okay. And? And a cogwheel. Just a tiny one. Though, that's the problem. Because yeah, it's so that's tiny? Smaller, a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Wait. The children. When they took apart your ah. scales, it was a tiny brass gear. Well, it wasn't that tiny. Now that That's I quite think big, it, actually. I, they didn't use it when we put the scales back together. The young uns? But why would the... You know what? I don't want to know. I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. Okay. Then let's talk to the kids. Sid! Is Mid still hiding from us? She wasn't hiding. She's fine. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I bet it's an airship! Do you think she'll let us help? That just so happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear. A tiny one. One that might fit on, say... I'm quite certain it was black and not oh, brass. the one you forgot! Isn't brass we like... Remember. A little bit we like saved golden? It, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. Since your lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. All the pieces that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. How That's are there pieces left over? Good to know. What? <laughs> then you didn't reassemble it. I found it. Not completely, at least. Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid needs them. That's all for now. But I'll let Mid know about your... hoard. Just in case. Yeah. Thanks, Sid. Alright, back to Mid. Well, did they have it? They did. 
And they kept it somewhere nice and safe. Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect! You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own. But with the right cog in the right place? Mm hmm Well, you just wait and see. So it's, it's going to be like flapping wings like a bird. Okay. Ah! This reminds me of Final Fantasy IX. Didn't the, the airship have something similar in Final Fantasy IX? Here goes nothing. Cool. And Radas too? <sighs> Titan's tits. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. This little thing Wouldn't already knew. Honestly, these bloody engines are driving me mad. I was so sure this would be the day she saw it. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. People will lose their homes, children, their mums and their dads. Like I lost mine. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head? Or do I follow my heart? Good question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And he were right. Right about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my Mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling them over the edge. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. But all that hard work... All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. But it ain't like it'll be gone. <laughs> Tell me, Clive, have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not I have. Since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you ask? More than just once. I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. A really hard one. So that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. Okay. So, no flying airship? <laughs> I can picture it now. Some daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. Like that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, nah. It's gonna be that Bahamut who brings us there, not the airship. Too bad. Of course, if I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt, I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. <sighs> My dad always said, dream big. But it in the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got Only a fair that few good yours. ones in me. I'm sure you do. Okay. Done with this. Done with aiming high.
Oh, the model airship, we get this one. Mid's dangerous dream of flight, immortalized in miniature. My dad always said there were two ways of living life, chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave, mid. Yeah, we're gonna take a look at that at the end of those side quests. So, done with that. Still no new hunts. We're gonna continue with, hmm, I wanna say litany? Or is it litany? I wanna say litany of errors. All right, as we are here, before we talk to him, so there's another. one moment you think you freed the realm from her fate, the next, a darker one rears up to replace it. What awaits us when we finally attain release? True freedom, or something else entirely? Hmm. We'll see. I will see if this guy has some meaning in the end. Still. Ooh. Actually, can we take a bath? No. It's not like in Ghost of Tsushima. He's naked! <laughs> you saw the butt. <laughs> nice. Reflect on... Uh, let's go for father. Yeah, you could have died yourself then. Oh, maximum health increased. Oh, that's what it, what it's for. I thought it was just for healing. That's awesome. Sid, may I have a moment? Of course. It is an honor to finally speak with you. My name is Herman. I've been with the Curse Breakers for some time now. And uh, I wish to be deployed to Ash. Any assignment will do. No. The lands across the Narrow are too dangerous. I will not send good men and women to risk their lives needlessly. Why would you want to go back? I need to retrieve something. Something important. Tell me, and I, I will get it for an you. Orphanage. Ah! Badbach Conservatory. Yeah. Or rather, I was held captive there. It was not a place of nurture. It existed solely to turn bearer children into mindless weapons. We were tortured. Until we feared no pain. Tormented. Until our hearts turned to stone. And few ever survived long enough to become tools of the last king. I can't imagine. I lost so many. I... I can't even remember all their names. But they must be remembered. They cannot fade away, faceless. And forgotten, the Institute was run with military precision. Every child measured, every name recorded, every death logged with meticulous care. Sid, allow me to travel to Ash and recover the registry so that my brothers and sisters might live on. You are a good friend, Herman. But the fact remains that Ash is simply too dangerous. Sid, please. Even should it cost me my life. Too dangerous for you, Herman. But not for me. I'll go to Bad Back and find the registry. You will? I won't let you risk your life. I don't know how to thank you. You can start by telling me where I'll find this orphanage. I know Either where. Goes. Hidden in a forest. Yeah. Overlooking the plains. All right. I'll see what I can find there. May the mothers guide you. Oh, thanks. Okay, then. Let's do this. But before we go, it's funny to hear that he said Badbach. Not bad back or something, but Badbach, which is actually German. And that's what I thought when I talked to him. I thought, ah, oh, Herman the German. <laughs> and this reminds me of Scrubs, one episode with two German guys. And that was quite funny. I am uh, Rolf's brother, Herman. Herman the German. You must get that all the time. No, first time. Oh. Let's hope it catches on. <laughs> all right then, let's go to the Badbach Conservatory. Right, yeah, it's it's down here where we fought, where, where we found this monolith. So let's go to Vidagras and go south east. Yo. This must be the orphanage. Hopefully the registry is still here. Well, let's see if there are still some Akashic, because last time we had to fight at least a few. So far, I don't see anyone. And we're just gonna go inside here. 
Okay, let's take a look around. There's a chest. Let's get this one. Okay. And there's more stuff. What is this? Badbach Conservatory Writ of Incorporation. The Kingdom of the Lute hereby incorporates this institution wherein juvenile bearers are to be granted the opportunity to give themselves in service to the state as soldiers. Trainees succumbing to the Crystal's curse or otherwise perishing are to be disposed of with all haste. The graveyard is strictly reserved for the uncursed. Bearer disposal within its bounds is punishable by death. Okay. Disposed of. Mm-hmm. Conditioning schedule. Today's exercise will consist of the press yard, 20 sandbags for such duration as instructor shall dictate, the furnace, burn intensity to be gradually increased, life combat, one to three hellhounds depending on performance. Okay. This is nothing short of torture. Yeah. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. I need to find that registry. Mm-hmm. But so far I haven't found it in here, so it's probably outside then. Wait. I have recently learned that my own daughter was among the children turned to stone by the brutal training I subjected them to. I had not so much as thought of her since handing her over to the authorities as a babe, but inquiries with the military confirmed it. It was her. I had been torturing my own flesh and blood, and now I see her everywhere. Today, one of the children smiled at me in the hope of receiving a few scraps from my table. It was her smile. The smile she inherited from her mother, the mother I killed for giving birth to a bearer. Their ghosts have all come back to haunt me. My daughters, my wives, all of them. All those children, so many have died at my hand. I can bear the guilt no longer. And so I have decided tomorrow, I too must die. It would be the last order I give those poor wretches. The last torment I subject them to. I will command them to tear me limb from limb and enter my accursed corpse beneath the white tree whose crooked hands reach to the sky in supplication. And beside me, my shame, my curse, the record of all their names, all those I have wronged. All right, we need to find a tree, a white tree whose crooked hands reach to the sky. So, outside then. This reads like a suicide note. Mm -hmm. Did the director go through with his plan? Yeah, yeah. There's only one way to find out. He definitely did. All right, it's gonna be this tree. Yeah, definitely. Tree. This must be the place. Did it say forked? I thought it only said white tree. Could he really be buried here? There's something hidden among the roots. Let's see. This must be the registry. Badbach Conservatory, Registry of Barra Losses. Okay, I'm not gonna go, although this might be the year, the month, and the day. 846, August 16th. Hans, 10 years old, lithification. Alfred, 9 years old, succumbed to conditioning. Franz, 12 years old, lithification. Paulina, 10 years old, emaciation. Actually, those could be all German names. Hans, Alfred, Franz, and Paulina. Hmm. 846... August 17th. Bruno, 11 years old, disciplined for attempting flight. And Johanna, 12 years old, disciplined for attempted flight as well. And then 846, September 18th. Reinhard, 9 years old, succumbed to conditioning. Martha, 10 years old, succumbed to conditioning. Lothar, 12 years old, lithification. And Dietrich, 11 years old, emaciation. And then the rest is missing. But those are really all German names. And Badbach is German. Hermann or Hermann. Hermann is English, but Hermann is German. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. So many names. Yeah. This place was a slaughterhouse. But where is the architect of all this misery? Oh. Okay. There he is. It was only a matter of time, I suppose. Nice. Oh, I 
meant to get the big guy. And done. I'm done here. Let's get the registry back to Herman. I hear that you traveled to Ash, Sid. Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. If I may, the bearer registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. I can still remember their faces. Like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning. Never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. One of their memory. See that their names live on. That way, at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid. You're welcome. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach. And the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering. And in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity. Were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. And that was a litany of errors. Ah, mesmerize? Reduces cooldown time by 1.2 seconds. Okay. Right. And with that, we are gonna go to our chambers, take a look at the Wall of Memories before we take a look at the missives, and then do those side quests before we continue with the Alliant reports. Oh. Uh. Hi, my friend. Let's talk about Origin. Um. I wish I could go up there with you. Doesn't seem right, leaving everything up to you three. It's hardly everything. There's plenty that still needs to be done down here. Like seeing to our stores and keeping Karen safe. Only you can do that, Goots. And I will. I, I promise. I won't let none come to no harm, no matter what. You can count on me. Just like we are all counting on you to come back safe and sound. <laughs> Thank Be you. Seeing ya. You know who I miss? I haven't seen Jill around. You're still here. 
I will not forget this kindness, my lord. I shall go to Eastport. Yes. But as soon as the rebuilding work is complete, I promise to return. And you're still here. I don't get it. I just don't get it. So, let's take a look at our memories. Everything that's new. So, the rusted battle helm. Yeah, we have read the text before. We're not going to read it again. Just so that we can get a bit better picture of it. There is the model airship. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. though the experiment ended in failure, Mid has allowed Clive to keep hold of the model so that once her renown has grown, he might sell the piece for an exorbitant amount of gil. Ah, yeah. The Tri Unity Accord. Signed in Port Isolde by representatives from Rosaria, Dalmechia, and Sunbreak. This mutual accord sets the stage for a new age in Storm, if not officially, then at least in spirit. And then we have the Winter Meat. Despite an obvious inability to hold his drink, Gaff has insisted that he be allowed to share the bottle when the time comes to crack the seal. Ah yeah, nice nice. Why is this door always open? Oh, Jill is here! Hello there! Clive? Do you have a moment? Sure. Of course. Always. For you? I wanted to give you something. Or something else? Is this? I stitched it from the cloth you gave Hortense. The piece she said you liked best. I told her I used to enjoy needlework, but I didn't think she'd remember. Oh. It's beautiful, Jill. You didn't have to. When I was very little, I recall my mother telling me that young ladies of the court would give knights ribbons from their hair before they went off to war. True. I still wear mine. Yeah. So I made you this instead. Mm-hmm. Red cool. is the color of passion. The fire in your heart. And Fierce the color and of bright, it binds Rosaria. You and your brother. You and your friends. You and me. Our bond. May it never be broken. Yeah, you just need to survive, everybody. And may it ever bring you back to me. That's the plan. I will always, always be here. That's good Thank to know. You, mm hmm. I like. I want to see what she got me. Velvet handkerchief. I'm quite certain it's also here, right? No? Not in here? There it is. A small square of embroidered red velvet gifted Clive by Jill. Red is the color of passion, the fire in your heart. Fierce and bright, it binds you and your brother. You and your friends. You and me. Jill. Yeah, nice. All right, then. Let's read our missives. Oh, there is... Quite a lot. Uh, let's start from the bottom and then go up. The Tri-Unity by Byron. Bringing together three men from differing backgrounds was not to be without some difficulty. However, come together we did for a better that is to year. The Tri-Unity was but a first step. A longer, more bitter journey awaits us all. One that will almost certainly end in hardship. Yet what matters most is not the destination, but what we can learn from one another while on the road there. You have paved that road for us with your courage, Clive. Now we must have the courage to walk it. Your loving uncle. On we go, the wages of fate. Joshua. Do you remember what you told me that night at Phoenix Gate? That while the fate of Rosaria sits on my shoulders, the fate of its dominant sits upon yours. But are we not both dominants of fire? Does not the flame of our forebears burn in both our hearts? Should I not protect you as you have protected me? You have chosen to be my shield. Now let me choose to be yours. Is this not what our father wanted? What Sid wanted? To cast aside fate and forge our own path? Grant me this, Clive. Let me be your strength. Nice. A hideaway welcome by Gaff. Edda seems fond of the silver bow we gave her, so much so she's been taking to setting it atop her belly as she rests. To hear her tell it, the rascal kicks something fierce when she does. Two. Sounds like we have another fighter on our hands and none too soon. I can hardly wait to teach our newest little curse breaker everything I know. Though I suppose we can all celebrate first. No need to get ahead of ourselves now. And lastly, Treasure Hunt by Mid. What? You didn't think I were just saying that stuff about hiding my engine, did you? Wouldn't you know, I have already a fine spot picked out and everything. But if you're going to go on this grand adventure, you'll need to be quick about your business with that ruddy god of yours. Take too long and somebody more clever might beat you to the price. I suppose in that case, I could bury you one of my lesser inventions. Goddess knows I've countless. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice, nice. All right. Uh, let's activate in a mood. By Karen. In case you haven't noticed, your poor hound spends all his time of late on the rear deck whimpering like Gaff in his cups. Something ain't right and my gut tells me it's not to do with his supply of antelope bones. Alright then, let's do this. More than words. What is it this time, Torgal? There's my boy. How are ya? Hiding for something, boy. What is it? What do you see out there? I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Say, that's why. Ah. The day brought him home. Oh, he wants to maybe to go How to his grave. Enough? And you're only thinking to ask this now. <sighs> Sid saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg, since you ask. Clap that there iron on him to keep him from doing it. Uh-huh. What's wrong, boy? I'll take like as not. Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. Hmm. Doubly hard in being a frost wolf. Torn away from his icons and all. Sid would always tell him, You want my iron gone? You find what it is you're looking for. <laughs> I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Togo. Well, actually, more sorry Jill, for making you wait right? so long. Let's get that thing off you. No, no, no. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he wants it off. Indeed. You miss it as much as the rest of us, don't you? You want me to go with you somewhere? Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing and all. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rubbed his belly these past ten summers. Your kindness is appreciated. You've been a good friend to him. Only because he doesn't talk back like the rest of you. Go on now. Okay then. Where to then, Toggle? I right, still sitting here. All right, let's follow him and see what he wants. All right, Toggle. Where are you taking me? I'm going to need a little bit more than that, boy. <laughs> Do you have a better hint for me? I'm still guessing Sid's. Unless... You've already given me one. Back on the rear deck, you were looking west. Toward Rosaria. Uh-huh. So you want to go home? Why don't we try the rookery? I haven't been to the island in almost 20 years. What island? Rockery? To Port Isolde, huh? then. Ah, Port Isolde, Fingers okay. Fingers the old mooring is still there. Right, let's do this. Ah, you want to go to one of these little islands. Okay, okay. It's still here. After all these years. Lots smaller than I remember. And you're a lot bigger. You might have to swim, boy. No. <laughs> I wasn't being serious. You two go on without me. Ah, oh, okay. I doubt that boat will hold a third. If you're sure. We won't be long. Hop in, boy. I want to see. Oh, come on. I wanted to see how he jumps in. Right, here we this are. This hasn't changed at all. The rookery's right through those trees. Come on. 
Okay. We do have a map. Haha, <laughs> funny. This uh, place name is Mist. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look around. Let's see what we can find. You there. I bet I could still beat you. <laughs> no, I'm not racing. Well, it looks like... Oh, no, he's still here. A treehouse. Very nice. I would have loved to have something like this when I was little. Here we are. This was our hideaway. Wasn't it, Toggle? So how did he get up? Did he just jump all the way? Or is there a second way to go up? Or did you carry him? Well, it looks like there has, a, uh, there has to be a second way then. Oh, so cute, little pup. Oh, coming here helped me to forget who I was, or wasn't. Prince, Shield, son his mother could love. Had I been any one of those things? Perhaps. <laughs> what is it, boy? This looks like armor. This is all from the castle. And Phoenix Gate. Did you bring these here? <laughs> My sparring sword. Well, this has been a long time since we sparred with Murdoch. And yes, this is what I wanted to say before. We have a dog! This is our dog. And I love it. I'm a, I'm a huge dog person. I have a dog myself. Kemi. Two arms. And yes, as we far as I know, we can use this dog during battle at some point as well. But this will be a few more hours in before we actually can do that. Such swordsmanship will serve you well in the field. But can the same be said of your spellcraft? The flames of the phoenix burn within you. Now let them burn without. You wield the Firebird's flames just as a first shield should. You flatter me, my lord. Or would you rather I flattened you? <laughs> Have you arranged? Well, well. <sighs> you never stopped looking for me, did you, boy? Aww. <sighs> Thank you. For never giving up. For never forgetting. Oh, so cute. I love dogs. Let's take this with us, shall we? So much. So I don't forget either. Right. We have something for our wall of memories. No, it doesn't look like there's a second way up. Looks like he maybe just jumped. There's more. That's not the way back to the boat, Toggle. Yeah, but I still want to take a look around. All right, all right. I'm coming. Can I go back up? Yes. So I want to take a look. I thought so. There's something else here. And that's actually it. Then let's go over there. I think I know where we're going. And there are no enemies here. Totally calm and peaceful. Ah, it's like a lookout. And we can see the castle. Very nice. Well, not the lighting, but... I have never heard my dog howl yet. She just doesn't wanna. <laughs> my neighbor's dogs do it all the time, but of putting the past behind you. Emmy is different. But without him, she would rather bark than howl. Today. 
And we certainly can steer our way to a better tomorrow. Come on, Togol. Let's go home. Nice, nice. That was a cool quest. Just because it was all about Torgo. That was More Than Words. Which also is a song. Yeah. Cavill's Fang plus one increases Torgo's attack potency. Even a legendary king surrounded by the realm's greatest knights and blessed by the very heavens would have found himself hard-pressed to unite the warring tribes of ancient Velestia. Fortunately, he had the help of his fine and trusty hound Cavill. Or Cavell? Hmm. And then the charred sparring sword? Clive's old sparring sword, salvaged by a faithful friend in the aftermath of the Ironblood invasion 18 winters past. Remember, Clive, your blade is not your only weapon. Rodney Murdoch. Mm-hmm. 18 winters past. So it has been 18 years, so we should be then, I want to say, 33? Something like that? Okay. We're going to take a look at that in just a bit, because I'm guessing we will be back home in just a bit. Well, soon. And then we want to take on the next missives right away. Sorry for the wait. We're ready. Yeah, let's go home. So, and there it is, the charred sparring sword. Clive's old sparring sword, salvaged by Torgal in the aftermath of the Ironblood invasion and hidden at Clive's original hideaway, the Rookery. It is a reminder of who Clive once was and who he has become, as well as of the unbreakable bond between lifelong friends. Very nice. So, we have a new missive as well, so let's read this. Up here, A Fine Hound by Karen. The two of you have been together for what probably feels like a lifetime now, but there is still a lot you have to learn about that hound of yours. Aye, he'd step in front of a bloody raging behemoth if it meant protecting you, but that don't mean you should take it for granted. At the end of the day, he's a hound, and sometimes he just wants someone to pat his head and rub his belly and give him a handful of cuckoo nuts. You'd do good to remember that. <laughs> Concern for Jill, we're gonna do this afterwards. Let's go for In Search of a Lost Tome.